Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to cover some uh, two important theorems about polynomial equations. The first one is called the irrational root theorem. So it says if a and b are rational numbers and the square root of b is an irrational number, or in other words b is not a perfect square, if a plus root b is a root of a polynomial equation with rational coefficients, and that word rational is pretty important, then a minus root b, or its conjugate, must also be a root. Let's just think about what that means for a second. If 3 plus root 2 is a root of an, a polynomial equation, let's say it's a quadratic equation, wouldn't it make sense that this came from the quadratic formula? And the quadratic formula always produces two roots and it produces the conjugate answer as well. So if 3 plus root 2 is a root, then 3 minus root 2 must be a root. Now just go back to this word rational for a second. When we deal with coefficients of polynomials, we usually deal with integer coefficients. We're saying that it could be rational, means uh, written as a fraction. What that's excluding is irrational and non-real coefficients. So for instance, if I had x squared minus root 2 equals 0, okay, that does not follow what this theorem is saying. So it does not apply to this. Root 2, or in this case negative root 2, is not a rational coefficient. So we wouldn't say that this theorem applies. So what could we use this example for? What if I asked you to write a polynomial equation of least degree, least degree meaning the smallest degree in order to meet the criteria, with integer coefficients, if 2 minus root 5 is a root? So integer coefficients, that's just even um, a smaller set of, of coefficients than rationals. So, so we're, we're going to use the irrational root theorem. 2 minus root 5 is a root. So its conjugate would be 2 plus root 5. So since the irrational root theorem applies here, we're going to say that the conjugates must both be roots. If I'm going to write a polynomial equation, and it has two roots that we know of, this, the least degree would be quadratic. So one of the factors, I think it's nice to write in factored form to begin with, one of the factors would be x minus the first root that was given, that's 2 minus root 5. Notice I, I subtracted that entire quantity. First factor is done. The second factor would be x minus the conjugate of that. And again, the entire quantity. And to make it an equation, I'm going to make it equal 0. So why does this work? Well, let's see what happens. If I were to multiply these together, we would get x squared minus 2 plus root 5x minus 2 minus root 5x. Ah, and then this is the, the part that's going to hopefully make the irrational pieces disappear. We need to multiply negative. 2 minus root 5 times negative 2 plus root 5. I like to use the box to organize my work. I might distribute the negative first. So let's change this. Let's say that this becomes negative 2 plus root 5. And this would become negative 2 minus root 5. So let's do the multiplication. Get 4 minus 2 root 5. This is uh, positive 2 root 5. And then this is negative 5. So that's exactly what we want to happen. We want the irrational pieces to cancel. Kind of reminds me of imaginary numbers, right? When you multiply their conjugates together, the, the non-real portions cancel. And then we get negative 1. So the only thing we need to worry about is the linear term. So let's see what happens here. This is going to turn into x squared 
minus 2x minus root 5x. This is going to get minus 2x plus root 5x. So zero. Excellent. We have a positive root 5x and a negative root 5x. They cancel. And in the end, we get x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 0. Again, it's of least degree. It's a quadratic because we were only given one root. Its conjugate had to be a root. That was a total of 2. But we could also throw some other things in there. If I said that the polynomial equation must have a root at 2 minus root 5 and at 3, that would just add in an, another factor, right, of an x minus 3, and everything should be fine. Just because I give you a root doesn't mean that its conjugate is also a root. It only works so far with irrational roots. But we still have one other theorem to know about, and that's the non-real root theorem. So that says something very similar. A polynomial equation that has real coefficients and a root of the form a plus bi, therefore we're talking about complex numbers, where there is an imaginary component, okay, must also have a root of the form a minus bi, where a and b are real numbers. Okay. I'm also going to put a little caveat here that b is not equal to 0. Because if b was 0, then we wouldn't have an imaginary component it would be a real number, and then this, this theorem would not apply. So what that says is if 3 plus 2i is a root, 3 minus 2i must also be a root. Those are conjugates of each other. So a very similar question to the one we did before. Let's write a polynomial equation of least degree with real coefficients this time that has a root of 3 minus i. Now, real coefficients means that we can have any number except anything that has an imaginary component to it. So if 3 minus i is a root, we know that 3 plus i must also be a root. So let's write our factors. We will have x minus the quantity 3 minus i. Our other factor will be 3 minus the quantity, or sorry, x minus the quantity 3 plus i. And I set that equal to 0 to make it an equation. Let's do some multiplying. We will get x squared minus 3 plus i times x minus 3 minus i times x plus 3 minus i times 3 plus i. Right? The negatives can't, um, are going to multiply to a positive. So now let's do our multiplication. Before I do that, I'm just going to distribute our x here. So we have minus 3x minus xi. This is minus 3x plus xi. And now for our multiplication, we will get 9 plus 3i minus 3i. That cancels. Minus i squared. And we know that i squared is actually a real number, so that's good news. Let's see here. We get x squared minus 6x minus i, xi plus xi cancels, and negative i squared really becomes positive 1, so we have plus 10. And there's a polynomial equation that has a root at 3 minus i and 3 plus i. I'll give you one more to try on your own.